Hi! So, hey world, Hi. hey YouTubers, hey social media junkies, hey everybody. Um, my name's Noel, and I'm Lauren. And you know, Happy New Year, yeah, 2015. All those New Year's resolutions kicking off. Everybody's trying to live their best life and mm. so we decided that we wanted to start a YouTube channel and just share our thoughts um share our stories and just different things that happen in our lives in the hopes that it will impact empower and, and evolve. evolve your story um you know we're we're not perfect we're not specialists or experts at all we're really just two young women on a journey and, you know, hoping that we can inspire other young people to live for Christ and just really live their best lives because that's just what we're out here trying to do mm -hmm. is live our best life. For yeah. Real. And we hope that our truth can propel other people to own their truth. You know, like whatever your experiences are, good, bad, your past, whatever it is that's holding you back to let you know that like God isn't looking at that. He's not looking at your past. You know, he's worried about what you're doing right now, you know. And we hope that by sharing, like, our stories and all the things that we've experienced, not saying, like, it's that much, you know, we're not that old, but, you know, that you can change your life around and know that there are other people out there that are going through the same things that you're going through. And, like, we know it's not easy, um, but, you know, we want to prevent people from experiencing some of the things we've experienced. <sighs> so many things we want to share. And... You know, one of, the, one of the biggest ones, especially for people our age, we just wanted to talk about godly friendships and how important they actually are. So, yeah, I mean, I think that, like, before you can even talk about friendship, I think that a major, <laughs> major player in the game is just the idea and the concept of accepting the truth. I think that when you start to try to develop a relationship with Christ and get to know him for yourself... It's all about truth. First, it's about accepting the truth about God and what God says. Secondly, it's about accepting the truth about yourself. And thirdly, it's about accepting, being ready to accept and receive the truth from your, your friends and your godly friendships, accepting the truth about what your parents are saying and your wise counsel, the truth about what your mentor, your pastor may be saying. You have to accept the truth. I think that without without accepting the truth, you're not ready to really grow and blossom into a relationship with Christ. You know, and the thing about the truth is that sometimes it's hard to accept the truth. It has been hard for me to accept the truth about things that my mom has said about me that haven't been the best things, but ultimately they've been true. You know, I've lived and known what the Bible said about certain things and I didn't want to accept the truth about it. So I ignored it and act like it didn't exist. And I live certain parts of it, but not all of it because I didn't want to accept the truth and live by the truth, you know, and I wanted to live on my own terms, you know, and, you know, I've had friends have said things to me and it's been the truth and I didn't want to hear it because I didn't want to live by it. I didn't, I wasn't trying to change. I was trying to be me. And I think that ultimately the accepting the truth means that you can't be selfish anymore. You know what I'm saying? You accept the truth about what God has for you, what the Bible says, then you have to give up those selfish things that you want to do that aren't in line with it. You know, or you're just going to keep living for you and not ever be able to get to the mark of what God has for you. Um, so I think that in talking about godly friendships, first you got to accept the truth. And when you've done that and you're ready to allow God to put people in your life to allow to grow you and to build a bridge closer to him, that's where godly friendships come in. Right. So, you know, quickly, Noelle and I, we've known each other since we were born. Not literally, but but literally. Um, we met at Cascade United Methodist Church sure. when we were just kids. I mean, we did everything together. We were acolytes together, ushers together, in the choir together. Name it, we did it. You know, we even had a singing group Lyle. together. Um, so we were, you know, great, great friends, all that. And then... You know, when college came around, we kind of went our separate ways, um, but we both graduated at the same time, and one day I just messaged her on Facebook, and I said, hey, you know, like, we should get together, and she mentioned that she was going to Cascade that Sunday, and maybe we should, like, you know, get lunch or something afterwards, which we did, and it was just, like, instant connection, you know, talking about God putting someone in your life, like, we reconnected for 
a reason. You know, Noel and I talk to each other every week now. I mean, all the time. All the time. We blow up each other's phones. All the There's time. There's no limit. It's not annoying. <laughs> exactly. We talk about everything, like, no holds bar. You know, like, if there's a situation that's going on, like, she knows about it. And, you know, that brings me to accountability partners. Noel is my accountability partner. And to really break down what that is, you know, an accountability partner is not someone who is necessarily, like, judging you. You know, telling you, like, oh, my gosh, you're such a bad person for doing this. It's more so of, hey... Don't beat yourself up for making this decision, but don't put yourself in that position again. And here are some ways that I can think of to help you not put yourself in that position again, okay? Like, it's never beating someone up, but it's letting them know, though, that that situation wasn't the best situation for them. You know what I mean? And um, choosing an accountability partner is something that's very important. You know, you need to choose somebody who is literally on the same path as you, who's trying to achieve the same goal as you, which is Jesus, okay? It's not somebody who's kind of like halfway. Halfway and half out. Right. I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do this. Exactly, exactly. It's an all-in thing, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, the Bible tells us we can't do this by ourselves. You just can't. You need people who are going on this journey with you. You need people. You have to have someone who's going to turn around and pull you, you know what I'm saying, up, whether that's your friends, your parents, whoever it is, but you need an accountability partner. So, you know, like I said at the beginning, that was the purpose of this video, just letting you know that there are people out there, whether new or old friends, who can help you on this journey. You never know who's, you know, going to be there for you. And I think, you know, just to close it out is that, you know, we always... That's how we learn and grow. You know, we actually open the Bible. We try to read it and dissect it and really understand it because every question that we have about life, friendship, relationships, problems, stress, pain, anger, all of this in the Bible. So I think a really great verse about friendship is Proverbs 27, um, verse 17. And it says, you use steel to sharpen steel and, and one friend sharpens another. And there it is. It's written, you know, you have to have friends who are going to sharpen you, who are going to keep you on the straight and narrow and not just tell you what you want to hear, but really tell you what God's best is for you. And it says, if you care for your orchard, you will enjoy its fruit. Absolutely. You know, you so. Care. Yeah. You care. I care about her. I care about her and I want to enjoy her fruit, whatever it may be, whatever she's going to put out, whether it's in her job or a relationship or whatever it is, like I care. So I want it to be the best fruit that it can be. Yeah. And lastly, and then I promise we're gonna we're gonna be done. We're gonna go to bed. But in culminating this this whole thing about accepting the truth, the truth about your friends, truth about yourself, truth about God, I think that it's important to know John eight verses thirty two. It says, "And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free." And I really, really do believe deep down that the truth really does set you free. People say it as a cliche. But the moment that I decided to listen to that thing that was tugging on my heart about myself, and for me, it was, um, you know, relationship into that later. But when you really accept the truth about yourself, your attitude, you know, your, your faults and all the things that aren't so perfect about you and you get off your high horse and you, you know, say, God, I want you to change me because I, I can't do this anymore. You know, I don't want to just come to you when I need you. I want to really have a relationship with you. It really will set you free. And God rewards obedience. He will bless you. He blesses you even when you aren't doing the right thing. But when you are doing the right thing, God will bless you immensely and just grow you and stretch you as a person and put amazing people in your life. So the truth will set you free. So go for it. You know, accept the truth. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Yes, so, Lord. We love you guys. Fix it, Jesus. Go fix it. Bye.